I'm not going to call him a pundit, but uh, David Barnson is with us this morning. All right, what's your inflation coming down slightly? Is the stock market off to the races? Well, it, the market likes this news, but the market has known all year what um, is the honest case here. Inflation was going to be coming down anyways. Mm -hmm. Goods inflation is in disinflation. It's negative. That 5.4% shelter number that Lauren just highlighted, that's the most disingenuous thing here. It's referring to leases that sometimes were signed two years ago, a year ago, and there's automatic renewals. Most people are not seeing 5% inflation in rent when they're going out and doing a new apartment. That's holding the number up in the threes. But look at food prices year over year at home, up 1% now. That's it. When you go out to eat, it's up more. That's because of these minimum wage laws. And that's the good that's news which this market is reacting to. That's right. Green across the screen all over the place. Yes, sir. Okay. Stay there, please. I've got more for you later. I think it's time we got back to the markets. Uh, David Barnes is sitting right next to me, aggressively looking at me to see if he can comment on politics. Do you want to comment on politics? Uh, Ohio's <laughs> not a swing state. Trump's going to win that by 10 points. Uh, Minnesota be interesting if it comes in play. I think oh, it's worth yeah. Long. Oh, yeah. Uh, but would. it's a state that didn't even vote for Ronald Reagan in 1984. So. Right. That's a revolution. So 49 to 1 always bugged me. I wanted 50 to nothing. On election night, if I see that Minnesota has gone to Trump, you know oh, it's over. So, oh, right there. It'll be one of the biggest landslides in history. Now, happens. here's what I want to talk to you about. If you look at the top three names in the S&P 500, they make up 20% of the S&P 500. I don't think we've ever seen that before. It's market concentration of an extraordinary level. We've, we've, Is it a problem? It's a huge problem. Why? First of all, we've never seen anything close to it. Uh, it was about 8% three companies together just a number of years ago. Uh, because what it's done is now put the market so dependent on just a few names that if something happens there, it brings the whole market down. Then index investors, which are largely smaller retail investors that are prone to panic, they start selling and it creates a kind of a spiraling effect, uh, just like it's done on the way up. It's pushed a lot of momentum higher because there's more forced buying in these indexes. It's not sustainable. It cannot work forever that people, it goes up just because more people are buying it. So we're talking Microsoft, we're talking Apple and NVIDIA. That's Those correct. three put together worth more than $10 trillion. Yeah, 20%. And one of those names, NVIDIA, is 35% of the market's return this year. Good Lord. Over a third of the entire S&P 500 return. That's market concentration like you ain't yeah. never seen before. Right. All right, David, stay there. Got more for you later. Thanks. David Barnson's with us. The election, November. Are migrants now a more important issue than inflation? You know, there's a sense in which I think they are, but I think they kind of come together in this sense. It undermines this idea that the Biden presidency was about competence, about seriousness, about policy. They, that was his claim in 2020. There was too much drama with President Trump. There was a lot of drama with President Trump. Yeah. But then President Biden said he was going to come in and get things done. The migrant issue is a disaster in blue and red states. Mm -hmm. And then the inflation issue. See, these are two bipartisan things that undermine his independent support. Got it. Thank you, David. I can tell you that today, OpenAI was prepared to deliver its bid to dismiss Musk's lawsuit um, for breach of contract, right? Okay. I think he knew it was a weak case. Do you have anything to add to this? Just remember, there were emails that he had sent where he acknowledged some of this stuff already. So I, I think the case was going nowhere, was likely to be dismissed, and that's that with that. All right, let's move on. Apple just became the first company to cross $1 trillion in brand value. David, do you really care about brand value? Nobody does. Well, no, they really care not. about cash flow. Right. That's all that matters. Right. Sales. Brand right. affects sales. It's a bogus number. It's made up out of thin air. Yeah. It's popularity. It's actually embarrassing. It's popularity. Sure. So popularity is reflected in sales. True. When things are popular, people buy things. So you do care then. But if it we're isn't something them. you can quantify, like this portion okay. of it is because of the brand value. That's all made up. It's adorable, but it's made up. You have info more. Mm, sure. <laughs> Amazon investing more money into affordable housing. All right, Lauren. How much money invested and how many units built? How so it? another one point four billion. The number of units built uh, 36,000 in all. This is a goodwill gesture by Amazon to come in and over the past three years is more than three and a half billion dollars by buying up buildings and making them rent controlled. A goodwill a gesture? A goodwill gesture. Yeah, I think they would want to cr make, build houses, but that's way too much permitting for them right now. I, I, can I be a little cynical here? Because I've studied this a lot. First of all, 80% of the units they've built have government subsidy. 
Eighty percent are getting money from the government. This was under Jay Carney's portfolio. He was the head of lobbying at Amazon. It was under their government relations department. Now they've moved it. It's more marketing oriented. But here's my problem, Stuart. They're saying it's because we're creating more demand and so prices are going higher. Well, why don't we have more supply? Why are these cities not allowing more houses to get built? Right. It's not a demand problem. No. You want high demand. It's which is why they're problem. not building, which is why they're buying buildings that already exist. And they're doing all rentals as well. They're, so they're jacking up prices for apartments, but they're not building more houses for people to buy. Uh, David, you've got some dividend picks, always a star feature of this program. Start off with Truist Financial. Well, this one has come down a little bit. It's obviously up here today as the whole market is, but Truist has been down over the last couple of weeks. A lot of the financials are, and this is just one of the very underpriced banks, a dividend yield near 6%. They're growing it substantially. They have tons of liquidity, and we just think Truist is one of the rare companies that's very undervalued in the market with a high dividend yield. 6% dividend yield, and that's safe. Very safe, and they're growing it year by year. Clorox, you brought this to, to us before. I mean, oh, sure. Who would have thought that Clorox would pay a good dividend? Uh, anyone following consumer staples, my <laughs> right, friend. Right. Why, why does Clorox pay a good dividend? Because their products have to continually be bought. People still need cleaning supplies, these consumer staples. But Clorox is down about $20. So you got a lower price point, a nice dividend yield that they're growing year over year. We love the whole sector. Clorox, of the consumer staples names we own, is the one down the most. That's why I'm presenting it today, because buy low is a good mantra last I heard. So at 131, what is the dividend yield? You're going to get over 3.5% today, and they're going to grow it year over year for the next 10 years. All right, David, thank you very much indeed. So the price of a double-double meal combo, not including tax, it's over $13 in San Francisco, almost $12 in Alameda and in San Jose. I remember going to fast food places and you can get a meal for like seven or eight dollars now we're pushing 15 in some cases i've seen it for like 17 dollars everybody's always complaining about this mm. in and out burger it has a, a cult following it is a staple and icon in california and they're paying their workers actually 22 and 23 dollars starting wage for in and out after this law you're laughing you're in california you're a california guy no i'm a new yorker who misses in and out burger and that's the only <laughs> I thing know, it's that's really the good. only thing about california i miss is in out burger they're not even a california company anymore they moved to franklin tennessee for the same reason everyone else did as but well prices are going up in california fast food operations of course and it's going up Some particularly more. because of the minimum wage but there's others uh, rubio's fish taco chain just declared bankruptcy there's there's tons of closings of other fast food places. In and out raising prices a bit because of this is to be expected. The only thing I'll say with In and Out is it's worth every penny. <laughs> I would pay double for In and Out what you pay for any other fast food meal. They have a secret meal. menu, right? The animal fries. I'm not saying nothing. I'm, yeah. not allowed mm -hmm. to, I'm not allowed to talk about it. <laughs> okay. Thank you, David. I'd like to thank David for being with me for the hour. I know it's hard work, but you you soldier through it. That's very good. Thank you, sir. <laughs> have a nice day.